Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send a Power Apps filter gallery to a CSV file. If you enjoy Team, SharePoint, Power Apps, Power Automate videos, feel free to subscribe to be pulling out more videos in those areas. So let's get into it. I am using my marketing SharePoint for the data source, and I'll show that right here. So this is my data I'm working with. And as you can see, uh, my Power App just has a title, a search field for the filter, and a gallery. So I'm going to be filtering this gallery, sending it as a collection from Power Apps to Power Automate, and then I'm sending the Power Automate link to download the file back to Power Apps. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The basics of my Power App. So I'm able to search the SharePoint list. So if I want to search for an employee, which is my search field right now, I can search for employees. And as you can see, I type Alice and I get Alice. And I'm doing this by having a, in the items property of the gallery, I just have a if statement if the input of the search field. So this is input first name. If it's blank or empty, I just want the whole employee list. But if it's not blank or empty, then I want to filter the employee data list by what's in the search box. And that is how I get those items. So in the top right hand corner, I have my icon for the user to download the CSV file. And in the on select, I will show you how to send this filter gallery to, over to Power Automate, which we will be doing some work in. So to start, we want to create a collection that has all the filtered gallery data in it. So we want to set, we'll do var collection. Actually, I did that wrong. We'll do col, and then we'll do gallery items. So this will actually be the gallery name. That's all items. So this will get all items, all the items in the gallery and all the columns with it. And I'll show that in a second. So if I clicked on this right now, our gallery has Alice in it. If I click on it, so it ran. And as you can see, we have one record and that will be Alice. If I remove the text here and I click on it again, as you can see, we have all the records from the gallery. So you know that the filter is actually working. So next thing we will do is go to our Power Automate and start creating the flow to connect it to Power Apps. This will be an instant cloud flow and I will name it Marketing CSV Report. And the trigger will be Power Apps. Click on Create. So you, we don't need to do anything for this step. And the next step, we want to collect the collection data. So this will be a Compose. And I want to rename it because what I rename it is what is going to be Power Apps going to be looking for it. So if it was just, I just left it as Compose uh, and the Power App, it'll show as uh, for the parameter uh, Compose. I want to show data so it's easier for the user to understand whoever's working on the app that, hey, this is the data field we're looking for. So if we go back to the Power App, I want to save the Power Automate flow. So we can actually import that into the Power App and start working with it. All right, the Power Automate button on the left-hand side, add flow. And we want to refresh. As you can see, it popped up now because we had the Power Apps connector first, so it looks for that. We have the marketing CSV report. So it should ask us for one input. And I want to go ahead and add some more functions to my button up here so i have the set action so i actually want to do a concurrent action as well so this is going to run more than one action at a time i just want to do this so i can send the notification message that hey the button's been pressed for the user so they understand that you know they press the button because you can click on it and sometimes you're like oh did i press it or not and then they spam click it so we're just going to let them know that hey working on generating uh, CSV file and we will just do information for the notification type if you aren't sure what that is that is you know like a different message at the top for a different color and for the second thing we want to do a we just want to run that flow 
to make sure it's working. So we're just going to do marketing. Actually, I need to put a comma there. Marketing. BSV report run. So it's going to look for one parameter. And our parameter is going to be the whole gallery items. And that is everything I want to run. And it looks like we have an invalid argument. All right, so I'm getting this error. It's expecting a text value. I actually have to send this collection as JSON. So I forgot the function, so let's go back in. Uh, you wanna put a JSON function before your collection. So it'll be the collection JSON, and then you wanna add a few formatting. You're gonna to wanna to ignore the binary data option. And then also we wanna do unsupported types. I don't really know why we do those two. I saw another video and it works pretty well. So something with the binary data and the support types could screw up the Power Automate flow. So we'll leave it as that. We wanna add another parentheses right here just to close up the uh, opening parentheses. So it looks like it's running now. If I click on this button, it's going to send the data over as JSON. And as you can see, it sends our notification for the user, which is nice. All right, as you can see, the flow ran, and we have all the data right here in JSON. So let's go ahead and go to Edit, New Step. So I actually want to select what data I want from the collection, and you do that with a select statement. And I want to get it from the data, so the data outputs. And then I want to start mapping what values I want. And to do this, I want to... It's easy to do if you have the, the SharePoint titles because that will be the, uh, the names of the columns you need. Also, if I open up Notepad++ and I paste in uh, what we had before, I can kind of find what values I'm looking for. So title, title is like the name and everything. And I'm just doing this in the Notepad++ because sometimes when you have spaces, it can get a little kind of different formatting. So you just want to be careful when you're uh, mapping everything. So this will be first name and that's the title. So for the value of this, I'm actually going to do a expression. So I want to get the title field from the body of the data. So it is item parentheses uh, question mark and then it is the name of the column. So in my case, the title field is the first name. So I'll go ahead and copy that so it's easier, so I can work a little quicker. Press OK. And I want the last name as well. So if I go back to my notepad and just search for a last name, as you can see, the column name is just last name, no space. And I will capitalize first name just so these two match. And I will paste in the first item. And I will type in last name. If I get these two fields, what other fields do we want? We will do, we'll do job title and then we'll do salary. You can do as many as you want. I'm just eliminating it to those fields for uh, the video. So we'll do job title. We go back in here. My notepad plus plus uh, job. Job title is labeled this. I'll do my item format again, question mark and job title. Last one is salary. We'll do item. Okay. Just for a warning, if you do more complex fields in SharePoint with like choice fields, um, multi-choice fields, and like person fields, it will you'll need to do different items. So let's say if this was a person field, it's an array, so you have to do like let me see if I can do it here. I think I do have a an array. So as you see, we have editor here, and in this array we have the editor. And then we get into the array, there's claims, department, display name. So if you want to get one of those secondary values, it would be editor. Uh, you can do a question mark. Question mark means it's an optional in JSON, um, I believe so. So if you do editor and then I did display name, it will grab the display name. So that's how you do that format. I don't, I'm not doing a person field in this one. So save that for another video, doing complex columns. All right, so if I just save it so I can test it out, we will run the flow again. So if I go back in here and I uh, will just edit something. So we have two results right here, Chris and Leslie. So if I click on this button, 
working on generating the CSV and we're just doing this to test the flow. As you can see, it failed. Pro the from property value and select action must be a type string. The value must be the value must be an array. So let's go ahead back into our select action. And it says it needs to be, I think it said it need to be an array. The value must be an array. So we'll go and we'll add the JSON function in front of that. So we'll go back to our select. We will copy the outputs and we will go into the expression and type JSON. And we'll do that on the outputs of the data. So that should make it an array that Power Automate can use. So let's go back in and test it with a recent trigger. As you can see, it ran successfully now and we're able to use the data. We have Chris and we have Leslie and we have the values that we want right here. All right, it looks like job title is actually a choice field. So I might have to do some more work on that. All right, so let's get into creating the CSV file. So to create the CSV file, we wanna add a new step, CSV. And we can just choose it from our select output because it will work with that data. So now I need to create the file for our user and we will use the create file, the SharePoint action, site address, we'll save it in my marketing. I will just save it in the main directory. So that will be shared documents. The file name, you can name the files whatever you want. Just be aware if you try to create a file with the same file name. So you have to make it like a dynamic name, not static, because if a lot of users use it, the uh, download button in the app, it's going to try to create the same file name. If it does that, the flow is going to fail. So you have to create something unique. You can either do like uh, the like CSV report, and then you can actually do like an expression for the UTC now. Let's do convert from UTC because I want to get the time in Eastern time zone. So that will be uh, UTC now to get the UTC time right now. Destination time zone. So for me, format is Eastern Standard Time. Your format might differ, so we'll look that up online what time zone you're in. For the format, we will do the year, the day, the month, and then we'll also do the minute because I don't think you could have some users doing it at the minute. So if you want to add seconds as well, I'll do seconds. So the file might look a little strange. This should work. So I will close up that bracket as it's invalid. So I think I added too many parentheses. And then after all that, we want to do .csv. And the content of the file is going to be the output of the CSV table. All right, so I actually want to have the user download this file in the browser. So I need to get a shared hyperlink, a shared link from the uh, SharePoint site. So if you do choose an operation, create sharing link for a file or folder. So this will actually create a sharing link that the user will download in the browser. And I'll show you how to do the downloading. So marketing. Library name, this will be the documents because the documents is where we're storing the file. Create the item ID for the ID. The link type, I want them to be able to view and edit. And the link scope, anyone, uh, we just only want people in our organization. So now we need to get that sharing link and send it back to Power Apps as a string. And we can do this if we type Power Apps, respond to Power App or Flow. We need to add an output. This will be a text. And we'll just do file URL. And we will do the sharing link. So this will just send the link over in text. We want this to be downloadable. So we will add a question mark download equal one. So this will actually create a new tab and download the file there. So let's go ahead and save this. And we need to edit our Power App and re-import the Power Automate flow. Because if I try to run this now, I added the SharePoint connector here. And in our previous import of the flow, it didn't have that connector. So it doesn't know what to do when the SharePoint connector comes. If I click on this, it's going to fail. And there's the failing. Let's check it out. You get this invoker connection override failed. 
So what you need to do for that, if it ever comes up, is just remove the flow from the app and re-import it. So now it's re-importing the flow with the right connectors, aka the SharePoint connector we didn't have. So we just need to edit our on select for the button now to actually launch the URL and also store the URL in a variable. So after my notify statement, we're going to add a set function on here and we're going to do CSE file URL comma. Then I want to put what we received back from, from the flow. So to do that, we need to go to our dot run and just add the file URL. And that is actually the respond to power up or flow. That is our uh, label right here. So just connect the uh, match up the parentheses here. And to launch that URL, there's actually a launch feature in Power Apps, which takes in a string. And we can use the, the set variable recreated that stores the string and launch that. A lot of work, a lot, get a little confusing, but uh, this should work now. And let's test it out. I will go ahead and we will filter this. So it should only send Joe in the CSV file. Click on download, working on generating the CSV file. Pop-up blocked in the top right. So we want to always allow pop-ups and redirects from this. Done. So let's run it again because it blocked in the browser. I'll click on run. As you can see, it downloaded the file. So let's open the file. So for the file name, it should be pretty unique. We got the date for year. Uh, something screwed up in there. Just check that out really quick. So it's going to bother me. So I did the minutes before the month. The months have to be capitalized. The minutes have to be lowercase. So that's why my file name looks strange because it's supposed to be January 29th, 2023. We have first name, last name, job title, and salary. So I kind of screwed up on the job title that that is a choice and choices get sent to Power Automate with arrays attached. So to fix that really quick, I want to go to my select for the job title. Now let's copy that, paste it. And then I also want to add a question mark value. Let's press OK. We will run it again. Let me close this out. All right, it doesn't want to close for some reason, so we're just going to go ahead and run it again. Fix the title. All right, I just removed the question mark, so I was still getting the error. So let's save it again, and we will run it. All right, so it looks like it saved correctly now. I just removed the question mark. And to do that choice field, I will just show the code again. So just the extra bracket with the array value you want. So I hope that shows you how to filter a gallery and send the results in a CSV. Uh, if you have any questions or any errors popping up, feel free to leave them in the comments. I know this is a longer video, but there's a lot of explaining and kind of figuring out a lot of errors you have to go through to get this to work. I left the errors in so you guys know what to expect. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.